This video will provide an introduction to using Aquadata Studio version 20 with Snowflake Data Warehouse. Aquadata Studio is a database IDE and now supports the Snowflake platform. The following list are some terms to become familiar with with Aquadata Studio and we can introduce these related to some of the main menus that you see in the background. So the starting point for using Aquadata Studio and connecting to Snowflake is to register and the server main menu register server or the very first icon uh, will show the list of databases that now include Snowflake. Then you have a flexible navigation tree where you can set up different groupings. You can see some different Snowflake environments that I'm connected to and then you can navigate and explore the, the different drill down areas. So the databases drill down, security, management, virtual warehouses are all areas in the navigation tree that we can explore. And then there's embedded right click menus as you might expect in a mature IDE like Aquadata Studio with many object editors, create, alter, drop object editors, and then easy to use scripting features. So we'll explore the right click menus and then for working with SQL, either opening up existing SQL scripts or, or typing SQL, the query analyzer is the area in Aquadata Studio for working with SQL or SQL statements. And there's automatic scripting and IntelliSense and a lot of powerful formatting features that you might expect in the query analyzer within Aquadata Studio. If you're newer to building SQL, the Query Builder is a familiar drag and drop interface for bringing over snowflake tables and having Aquadata Studio automatically generate DML statements or SQL syntax against the Snowflake environment. The ER Modeler will allow you to reverse engineer and diagram the Snowflake data warehouse, see the relationships between tables and entities, and then generate scripts, generate reports, even comparison features from a model to a live data, database or data warehouse. The visual analytics is available for any data set in Aquadata Studio, and so now you can access the visual analytics against Snowflake data sets. So there's easy integration points in different areas for the visual analytics. And then through either right-click menus or the primary tools menu, you'll see different ways of invoking the import-export data wizards, some of the powerful scripting features for server scripts or schema scripts, and then also under the tools menu are some of the powerful compare features for comparing DDL, a schema compare wizard, um, even any, any file compare, and side-by-side -side, uh, comparison scripts. So let's dive in and explore these areas within Aquadata Studio. When you first install Aquadata Studio, you'll see an empty database list, and then you have the ability to connect or populate your database connection tree by invoking server, register server, or the very first icon for connecting to the different databases supported by Aquadata Studio. So here you can see an alphabetical list that now includes Snowflake. And so as you select a different server platform, you can see what areas of information are needed to be populated. So this is an area that you can name in a way that you recognize provide your user credentials, user password, and then what's the location of that Snowflake data warehouse. So as you choose different platforms, this information can change or vary uh, depending on which platform you choose. So here, if I was to choose, say, SQL Server, you can see how that changes a little bit. Here for Snowflake, you see these main areas of name, credentials, location. Then you can right-click on an existing connection and go into the server properties there and then see how you've named that or customized that um, and then other features here like filtering is is a benefit so when you build your connection there is a feature to clone that connection and then something I like to do is have say a parent navigation connection where I see all my databases and then I create a filtered view with just the databases that I'm responsible for just the data warehouse environments that I'm responsible for so you have that flexibility of cloning a connection and then going into the server properties and perhaps setting up a filter for yourself for just certain databases so here you can see in this connection, I've set up a filter to just show these three databases, Aqua, DB Ordering, and Snowflake. So you have that customization capability. And then you're encouraged to explore, right? If I expand or collapse the different database platforms I've connected to, you can see some variations in terms of uh, the architecture of those different platforms. So for Amazon Redshift, you see databases management security. 
For SQL Server, you see databases, snapshots, management, security. For the Snowflake environment, you see databases, security, management, virtual warehouses. So as you start expanding those areas, you can explore the object navigation tree under the schemas drill down. And so there you'll see your object types, tables, views, user-defined functions, file formats, stages, and pipes. As I drill into the other areas, you'll see different groupings. So security has network policy, roles, and users. Management shows managed accounts and shares. And virtual warehouses shows resource monitors and warehouses. So you are encouraged to right click in these different areas and you'll see different features like create, clone, alter, drop, as you might expect in a mature IDE. So you have object editors that I can invoke and some of these I have open, but if I open up say a create table, you'll see that'll open up as a tab within the application interface. So you have tabs within the navigation and then some windows are standalone. So you have a combination of pop out or dockable windows tabs within the user application and then some of the primary windows are standing or floating windows so the query builder the visual analytics and the ER modeler those are examples of standalone or floating windows that we'll take a look at more closely so here's the query builder where you have the familiar drag and drop user interface here's the entity relationship diagram where you have different ways of navigating you know very large environments in the data warehouse Here's an environment where I have over 120 tables and 114 relationships. Here's a smaller environment with, say, 10 tables and 14 relationships. So you have that capability of, of generating entity relationship diagrams against very large or smaller environments. And then the visual analytics is also a popular area within Aqua Data Studio now for slicing and dicing your data and building data visualizations. And now that supports the Snowflake environment. So you can easily drag and drop data sets and start to tell a story against your Snowflake data environments. Okay, so maybe let's just back up a little bit. Um, you're encouraged to explore the navigation tree, right click in different areas, and you'll see ways of invoking some of the object editors for creating users or shares or exploring resource monitors or warehouses. And then another core area within Aqua Data Studio for working with code or working with objects or building SQL is the query analyzer. And so here, if I just start typing SQL, you have different IntelliSense windows that you might expect in an IDE like Aqua Data Studio. So you have pop-up windows where I can easily just select tables or fields and then different ways of executing one or multiple statements with the different green execution arrows. So here I could parse and parse through a query analyzer and see what statements make up that query analyzer. Or I could execute one or multiple statements and then bring back result sets and take action on that data. So you have the ability to save your SQL with the top portion of the screen and some of the icons here that you might expect if I right click in the query analyzer. You have lots of coding features. And then the query main menu expands where you can see definition for the different green run arrows from parse to execute one or multiple. And then other popular editor features, including the SQL history, where Aqua Data Studio can keep track not only of your SQL against your Snowflake environment, but any environment that you're using Aqua Data Studio against. So this is a very powerful tool that has these type of mature features uh, that you'd expect in a database IDE. Okay, so the query analyzer allows you to type SQL and work on existing SQL. The query builder has more of a familiar drag and drop user interface where I can bring over tables and then start selecting fields. So here you can see it can automatically write select star statements for me and then I could execute that and bring back my result set. Or I could individually start selecting fields and or drag and drop to the white space and see SQL being written for me. So if you're a little newer to the SQL syntax against the Snowflake environment, the Query Builder can be very helpful. And then, of course, you can take action on your data in different ways. You have the right-click features to save your result sets or integration here to the visual analytics. And so wherever you have data sets, you see the icon to the visual analytics. And this is a, an area that has grown quite quite a bit in the user base for Aqua Data Studio over the past six to ten years, where you have easy to use features for bringing your data into your visual analytics window and then easily adding additional data sets. So here I can connect to existing data sets, see any existing result sets, and then bring these data sets into visual analytics. So if I wanted to work on new data sets or save these to existing dashboards and worksheets, these are powerful features. And then these are shareable artifacts for 
any Aquadata Studio user. So here, Save As would allow me to save this Visual Analytics workbook. Save As would allow me to save these Query Builder files. And then the Save As would allow me to save my Entity Relationship Diagrams. So the ER Modeler is a primary menu where you have forward engineering and reverse engineering. So here, if I click on ER Modeler New, you'll see Snowflake listed in the database selection. And then I could cho choose the drag and drop user interface for bringing new tables and defining relationships between tables and then generating the deployment script against the Snowflake environment. So here would be forward engineering where I could define relationships and define structure of tables. And then the tools menu would allow me to generate the deployment script or generate a report. Perhaps if we explore a, an existing ER diagram that I have open, you could double click into the entities, actually see the SQL tab for the Snowflake environment. Here tools generate script would easily step me through selecting which objects and then which tables or views and related objects I'm building a script for. Here are some defaults and some easy to use preview options. So just a few clicks here and here's hundreds of lines of DDL for generating um, object structure scripts for the Snowflake platform. Okay. And then as I was mentioning, there's, there's many right click features throughout Aquadata Studio as you might expect. And so for invoking some of the popular features under the tools menu, you can drive from the primary tools menu where you see the import and export data, schema script generator, server script generator, object search, and these are available in right click menus as well. So if I right click on a connection, there's a shortcut to these popular utilities in Aquadata Studio that are now supported against the Snowflake environment. And then another area that is very popular and helpful, um, in addition to the schema script, so maybe I'll invoke these just so you can see the difference of the screen. So schema script generator will have my object DEL, uh, tables, views, related objects. And then the schema script generator will have the other areas of security management, virtual warehouses. And so you can see different groupings there. And then similar user interface. So here, if I invoke the server script generator, you can see the differences between those two and how those are grouped. So easy ways of generating object scripts, moving object scripts from one platform to another, and then um, easy features for managing these files. You can see on the right-hand side, um, a files navigator where I have groupings and, and ways of recognizing Aquadata Studio files. Or you can easily set up shortcuts to your own directories. So mount directory would allow you to access different environments that you have directed map paths to. And then version control integration is, is an area of interest for many users. So you have version control integration uh, from subversion, CVS, Perforce, even Git. Okay, so these are some popular areas in Aquadata Studio that now are available against the Snowflake environment. Under Help About, you can see the link to the user community, and there's lots of resources there to help you become more familiar with what we're doing in the cloud and for other um, environments, not only traditional RDBMS platforms, but NoSQL and um, some of the newer data sources like Snowflake and Interbase. Thank you for joining this video and good luck with Aquadata Studio.